God to are uh, inspiring really to see what they're doing. They're almost 30 years in Romania and now open to the Holy Holy Spirit and using their gifts uh, in a new way um, to train missionaries and to, 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 to counsel missionaries. All right, so this, this morning, did you all get a handout? Anybody get a handout? Okay, so how many... How many gifts of the Holy Spirit did you say that we're looking at? What's that? 28. 28. 28. Now, you, different lists, you can have more or less than that, but uh, we're working with 28. I will have a spiritual gifts test for you uh, in the next several weeks. I've got it ready, but I thought it would be better if we just keep going through these and then take it at the end. Now, if you like Tom, you already know your gifts. Especially I have like three of those. Three. <laughs> yeah, if we don't pass it, are we going to get kicked out of the church? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're going to pray for you. <laughs> Thank you. <yeah. laughs> Sorry, no gifts out. No, no, yeah, there's no way out. There. No way out. Uh, this morning we're looking at um, five new gifts here. And so we're going to look at exhortation, faith, giving, uh, healing and helps and serving, helps and serving. But today is Memorial, it's Trinity Sunday, it's Memorial Day tomorrow, I've got a lot going on. So why don't we begin with prayer this morning, uh, asking God to guide us today. Lord, we are truly grateful for the chance to gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you for the way you are working in and through us. Uh, by the power of your spirit to, to conform us to your image to to make us like you to build your kingdom here on this earth we thank you that we get to be a part of that that you've invited us into that work that you're doing we also want to remember our veteran not our veteran those who have died those who have died in the service of our country and so i pray this prayer O king and judge of the nations we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of, of our armed forces who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. And we ask that you grant we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. We pray that through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Any of you have folks that family or friends who died in battle? I'm gonna ask that in I'm gonna ask that in worship service. I'm just curious if any of you have had family or friends who that's not local. local. So it's quite the sacrifice for our freedom. Praise the Lord. All right. We want to recognize our our gifts today as much as we can. So exhortation, so let's, let's, let's begin over here. How about Robin, will you read the, the definition we have there for exhortation? Exhortation is a special ability God gives some to help strengthen weak, faltering, and faint-hearted Christians in such a way that they are motivated to be all God wants them to be. It is the ability to help others reach their full potential by means of encouraging challenging, comforting, and guiding. Also, it is a divine enabling, enablement to present truth so as to strengthen or urge to action those who are discouraged or wavering in their faith. Do you want the bullet point? Yes, okay. please. I'm sorry. People with this gift come to the side of those who are weak in spirit to strengthen them, challenge or confront others to trust and hope in the promises of God, urge others to action by applying biblical truth, Offer advice, an outline for a solution, or a program for progress. Motivate others to grow, and see also encouragement. Yes, yes. So it does share some similarities with encouragement, exhortation, but it is slightly, slightly different. Uh, any of you feel like you have that particular gift of exhortation? Uh, or know of others who, who do? Most preachers? Pastors should have this gift, at least in some some measure, right? Um, it's hard to not preach without it exhorting, <laughs> uh, challenging, comforting, guiding, encouraging. 
but we, but many, many people have this gift. Thanks be to God. Um, we're coming to the side of, of people. We're coming along the side of people to exhort, right? We're not like, you know, we're actually walking alongside them. Like you can do this. <laughs> you can do this. You are weak, but in God, you will be strong. That's exhorting people, right? Um, you don't shy away from the truth. You figure out a way to share the truth in, in love, of course, but, but always sharing the truth of God as, as we understand it. Um, as we say there, urge others to action by applying biblical truth. So you can't really exhort unless you know the truth, or at least you're trying to live out the biblical truth in your own life. Um, I like that idea of you're outlining a solution for people. You're a problem, almost like a problem solver. Where you see a problem, exhort, they'll see a problem and they'll see a solution to that problem. They're not like, oh, you're you stupid idiot, you know, you sinner, you know, there's no way out of this thing. <laughs> That's not exactly exhorting. <laughs> there's a problem and there's a solution, right? The exhorter comes along and says, you know, here's the solution to, to what you're what you want to look at. Michael, I, I see a lot of leadership in this too. I think whoever has this gift probably has a gift of leadership. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, there will be some uh, strong connections to leadership with exhorters. That's right. You can't be, it's hard to be faint of heart with this gift. You have to really have a lot of courage to have this gift, mm -hmm. at least having it in, in a full measure. All right, let's move to faith. Faith, Duvall, will you read that one for us? Sure, faith. Faith is a special conviction God gives to some to be firmly persuaded of God's power and promises to accomplish his will and purpose and to display such a confidence in him and his word what circumstances and obstacles do not shake that conviction. It is the divine enablement to act on God's promises, confidence and unwavering belief in God's ability to fulfill his purpose. People will, with this gift believe in the promises of God and inspire others to do the same. Act in complete confidence of God's ability to overcome obstacles. Demonstrate an attitude of trust in God's will and his promises. Advance the cause of Christ because they go forward when others will not. Ask God for what is needed and trust him for his provision. Okay, so strong. Everyone has, has a gift of faith. Um, without faith, no one can see God, right? So everybody's got this in some measure. But this is talking about an extraordinary measure of faith that, that certain people have. And do any of you feel like you have, have this in your own life or know someone that might have this gift? I think we all do. Well, but I, well, personally, my, my faith is definitely increased over the last year or so just with what's going on in the world and you know what it, it it's you have to have faith to overcome the way of the world and know that you know who's in control i mean you just you absolutely have to mm -hmm. huh? good uh, faith comes by hearing the word of god right and i found that if you get somewhere by yourself and read the word of God out loud to yourself, then you see it, you think it, you speak it, and you hear it, and your faith will increase exponentially. Absolutely, absolutely. If I only did that, I'd be, I'd have much more faith. <laughs> Well, you're making progress, Tom. Yeah. Right. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll stay in positive. At least I know the formula. <laughs> Other comments about faith? I think it grows. Mm -hmm. It grows especially if we try to help it grow. Mm -hmm. And that's what, really why we're here at 9.30 on Sunday mornings. <laughs> right. Because the more we learn, mm -hmm. the deeper our faith can become as we understand more, mm -hmm. accept more. Believe and trust more. Mm -hmm. I think it's a constant changing thing. I don't know whether it can have once we have it. I don't know about that, but I know it can grow. Yeah. And we want it to grow. He wants us to grow. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There 
there are there are certain times where this gift just kind of wells up, and I do think it is cultivated, like you said. There's a it's almost like a garden. I mean, faith has to be cultivated, uh, and by the Word of God, getting more of the Word of God in us, uh, hearing it as you say, and then living it out, our faith is increased. Um, you know, it's interesting. A new believer, most most new believers, this gift just kind of you see it taken off, right? Like, oh my gosh! Especially if you come from a life of a radically changed life, right? You kind of see a, a, a good measure of this right off the bat in new believers, and then invariably there might be an ebb of that depending on circumstances. And then you get another kick kickstart of it. Maybe you may see a crisis in your life or whatever. But there are things that cultivate it in us for sure. Um, but uh, without it, no one will see see God, of course. So it is a gift from the whole, gift from the Holy Spirit to have it. Well, I mean, really, we should. I mean, we're working for eternal life, not this life. That right. your uh, eternal life is what is more important than this life, because that's forever. Right. Well, I would say this life is a continue. Like this is this is life now. But you're, it's going to move into overdrive <laughs> yeah. in the next phase, yeah. if you will. But so, so this life is part of eternal life, right? But it does get better. It does yeah. get much better yeah. <laughs> when I mean, we, we see Jesus that. face yeah. to face. So we have faith to believe that. We have faith to believe that this is not all there is. Mm -hmm. This is just the beginning of something so much better right. that God has in store for us. I appreciate um, what was said about the connection between change and faith. When I think of Peter following the Lord, I mean that he saw something when Jesus taught and when he put the net on the other side that that catapulted his faith. Um, mm -hmm. And then he was able to act. And when Jesus healed people, he said, "Go in peace. Your faith has, you know, your faith has made you whole." And so faith, we have to be become unresistant to change. Mm -hmm. And faith helps us to do that because we trust in something beyond ourselves to do that. And I feel that um, it's always us as Christians. We, we are always on a journey and we are never to be stagnant. We are always, where we're going and what we're doing for the Lord will change. And, you know, we always need to be open to the new and open to that. Mm -hmm. And that will give us more faith. It, if you take that act, then that breeds the next act. And then that, and it goes and it grows from there. And that's where, you know, our faith is like a mustard seed. It starts off so tiny and then it can become, the more you act on each step that you do, the more you'll have. Yeah. yeah, the disciples, you're right, the disciples learned this in Scripture. I mean, he, go, he he said, if you have faith, just like a mustard seed, you can you can move mountains, he tells the disciples. And they, they don't have a clue what he's talking about, by the way, right? Yeah. But they have a clue after the resurrection. It get, yeah. kicks into overdrive for them. They start realizing, oh my gosh, now I know. You know, at the end of John's Gospel, it says, greater works will you do than I've done. Mm -hmm. Really? Are you kidding me, Lord? But through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit and the power and the church together, as a, as a, as a, as together, it can do this, right? Jesus said this, but it's only by faith, the increased faith, the cultivation of faith, uh, openness to change. These disciples had to be open to change in their life. So you're you're exactly right. We can't even have faith and believe without, uh, I mean, in and of ourselves, without the without the Lord giving us a, a measure of faith. Uh, and when you pray for faith, uh, right. Elijah right. asked Elijah right. when he was fixing to be taken up, said, "Give me a a, a double portion." Mm -hmm. And and basically he got it because everything Elijah done, did, Elijah did twice. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it was amazing. That's right. He believed in faith that uh -huh. God was going to do that for his life. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move. Could I? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Debbie. Please, I'm sorry. I didn't see you.
words for you on your behalf every day. And when I was reading this, I thought she showed that right then that she would be doing that on my behalf. And that, that was such an example to me to try to be that for other people down the road too, but that just was so impactful for her to yep. say those words and show that faith when I needed it so badly. We can do this for our loved ones. That's excellent. We can do this for our loved ones who have either knew, knew the Lord and fallen away, right? We can do it for the people we want to see come into the kingdom. We're, we're, we're having faith for them that, that God would, we could stand in the gap for, for their faith until they receive that faith that they need themselves. So, yeah, yeah that's an excellent, excellent thing. What a dear friend, right? Yeah. To, to do that. Speaking of uh, dearness, giving. <laughs> Giving of oneself. Christine, will you read that one for us? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Um, who's going There's, to oh, oh, here, here, right here. And I don't have my glasses. Okay. You can help with one, but not the other. <laughs> Kevin, will you read that one for us? No, no worries. Sure. <laughs> giving. The gift of giving enables a believer to recognize God's blessings and to respond to those blessings by generosity. Generously, sacrificially, and cheerfully giving of one's resources, time, talent, and treasure, without thought of return. It is divine enablement to contribute money and resources to the work of the Lord with cheerfulness and liberality. People with this gift do not ask, how much money do I need to give to God, but how much money do I need to live? People with this gift manage their finances their lifestyle in order to give as much of their resources as possible. Support the work of ministry with sacrificial gifts to advance the kingdom. Meet tangible needs that enable spiritual growth to occur. Provide resources generously and cheerfully, trusting God in his provision. You may have a special ability to make money so that they may use it to further God's work. As spoken by the treasurer. That's right. Why I have him read that? Bless him close. I noticed that he takes up the collection. Exercise your exercise your gift. <laughs> oh Lord. Can you think of people? Can you think of maybe you or someone you know has this, this extra measure of, of generosity? Well, the, the Smith basically gave up yep. everything they had and did missionaries. I mean, they sold it all. Yeah, that's right. They were that's there. right. It's a perfect example. Of Carol and Clark. Yeah. yeah, that's right. My wife will give till it hurts. Me. <laughs> 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 that's the two shows back. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, you know, I think that first one is a big one. Limit your lifestyle so that you can make room for the Lord in your well, it is anyway, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's all right. Yeah, you're right, Kevin. It's, you got to make room, <laughs> make room for the, the Lord in our lives for that. You know, money is one of the hardest things for us to kind of think about as being gods. You know, I, I'm not sure why that is, but I, maybe it's maybe it's we don't think we'll have enough. I don't, I don't, I don't know why that is, but it's really hard for us. To, to do that. Well, and there's always, at least from my point of view, I, I've always been uncomfortable talking about money as it relates to church. Mm -hmm. I, I Is that because of the negative example? That you know because there's a lot of them. To run the church and to run your, your outreach, but it just, you know, in business you talk about it all the time, but it just seems like something that's a little, you know, odious to talk about in church. And I may be wrong on that. Well, I think it's because there's so, been so neg many negative examples of it in the church. I mean, go back to the book of Acts. Right at the very beginning, Ananias and Sapphira are withholding money from the church, and of course, it doesn't end well for them. Of course, they're, they're misrepresenting. I mean, they didn't even have to. Yeah. Have to give it, but they they misrepresented what 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 was there. And you're right. I mean, it's just a huge temptation for churches to mismanage money when there's not good accountability structures. We're all prone to things, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, yeah. My grandmother Matlock, my dad's mother. Very poor woman, uh, didn't make a lot of money, but she would give about everything she had to the ministries. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like I think of her like kind of the widow's mite, my grandmother. Um, 
she really did not have much. And then she rented her whole entire, she never owned the house. No, well, I take that back. She did own a very small house for a little while, but she basically rented her entire life. Um, didn't marry till late in life. She worked in a mill. She was just a very blue collar, blue collar kind of person. But um, man, I mean, the money that she got, she saw it as the Lord's. Mm -hmm. And she gave as much of that as she, I was like, Grandmother Matlock, you're not gonna have any money. Oh, the Lord will provide. Mm -hmm. The Lord will provide. And so she she lived that way her whole life. And I thought, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> but she was inspiring. I mean, now later in my life, I've learned learned some things from her, you know, that I, I needed to learn. So maybe, hopefully, you have others in your life that you can. Well, you should through. also give without strings attached. Right. I think right. that's probably right. a big issue too in churches. I'll give this if you'll do this. Yeah. Yes, quid pro quo. Mm -hmm. I'll do this if you do this back for mm -hmm. me. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, there is, that is very true, very true. Tithing is so healthy for us. I mean, giving 10% um, or at least, or preferably mm -hmm. more. I mean, it, it teaches us, it increases our faith. We'll have more in the long run, we'll be blessed. And it doesn't, you know, it's not really wealthy I don't know. I, I don't think wealthy people alone like do everything. I think it's it is the widow's mind. It is the blue collar person giving their little bit. That that's what actually probably keeps more things going. I some of the most generous people I know are people who don't have much at all. And they but they they don't because their view of material things and wealth is of the kingdom, not of this world. And they're free. When you give, you're, you free yourself because you are not trapped and entangled by possessions, by houses, by clothes, by whatever it is that you're attachment to. You're releasing that. And God fills you. And then you can give more. Then you'll want to give more. And the more we hold on, we, we become sick. You know, and so if, if you want to be free, then... You know, that's why he told the wealthy young man, you know, go sell what you have because that's how you're going to be free. In our attachments to stuff, find us. And it starts with money. It's just another way of building your faith. If you give God that 2%, just wait to see what you, you know, you might be tested. The car might break down, but you'll find God will provide, you know. So it's been our story all through. I think when Madeline was born, we had $600 in our savings account. And I get teary because God's always provided for us miraculously and um, in major ways. So if, if you are obedient and you give, God's going to take care of you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, and we, here we sit in a very wealthy area. And so the challenge for us is to share the gospel with so many rich people around us um, and see how God can transform their lives. So many wealthy people in this area. And it's contrasted with abject poverty, too. I know, I know. The contrast is so stark here. So we have a lot of challenges and opportunities here in this area to share the good news. But you might you might want to think about, yeah, what is your relationship to money? You know, how does that how does that free you up, you know, to serve the Lord? So anyway, good 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 discussion. Healing. Healing. Um Let's see, who has not read this? Who would like to read? Debbie, have you read? You've read, haven't you? Debbie, have you read? No. Please read. Please read on healing. <laughs> the gift of healing is a special ability God gives to some to serve as a human instrument through whom it pleases him to cure illness and restore health, physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually, apart from the use of natural means. It's the divine enablement to be God's means for restoring people to wholeness. People with this gift demonstrate the power of God, bring restoration to the sick and diseased, authenticate a message from God through healing, use it as an opportunity to communicate a biblical truth and to see God glorified, pray, touch, or speak words that miraculously bring healing to one's body. Mm, thank you. So an extra measure of this gift of healing. Um, and there you see the characteristics that this person might have. Um, obviously Jesus had, had this gift. 
Uh, of course, Jesus had all these gifts, of course, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> um, there, was no, there was no shortage of these in Jesus. Um, but as he saw it to his disciples, he said, you'll have this gift too. Many of you will have this gift too. Remember, he sent them out, the, the 12 of them, and then the 72 of them, and to heal. He said, go out and heal. Um, and so there, there are many today who have this, this gift of healing. Um, of course, I will say that with the rise of what we call faith healers, uh, or uh, what is it called? Um, many churches that practice faith healing, they, they really, fortunately, many of them have tied certain aspects to this that I don't think are biblical. You might have to, some would say you gotta have a special material object for the healing, like you gotta buy my prayer cloth or whatever it is. <laughs> That's not biblical. That's not biblical. You don't need a special prayer cloth for healing. Um, but uh, I will say that the faith healing community has at least helped the modern church to see that God is a God of healing, even with all of its negatives that it has brought. And so I hope we can have an orthodox view of healing, that God wants to heal and restore um, even today, it wasn't some gift that was just left back in the you know the apostolic age. <laughs> so, uh, but there are certain people who have this gift, and um, it's, it's beautiful to watch. Any of you feel like you have this gift or know someone has this gift? I know Tom, you you have this gift. I I I have been used, uh -huh. um, and um, and it wasn't me, uh -huh. and I can't I can't say it was me because I. I got up and I suited up and I showed up and and we were doing healing prayer and I had a little vial of oil and I'd go to make the sign of the cross and pray for them and um, and they'd be healed. I was more surprised than they were. <laughs> <laughs> well, strangely enough, you know, um, Jesus went to Nazareth and he could do very little mighty works there because of their unbelief. Right. But then, but then he met up with the um, the guy at the pool of Bethesda, and he didn't have any faith. He didn't even know who Jesus was, and Jesus healed him. So, you know, um, have you ever heard of the Order of Saint Luke, oh, yeah. where you study all the healings of Jesus? And yeah, that's that's an interesting study. Well, you know, we have a healing service here each week for anybody who needs that. And so I, I do believe in healing. I think it's an essential part of the ministry of Christ. We will start our healing prayer again for the Eucharist here very, very soon. So uh, thanks be to God for that gift. Last one here is helps and serving. And uh, Bill, Bill M., can you, can you see that with the lighting in here? Are yeah. you okay? Okay, gotcha. Help and serving. The gift of help serving is the gift that enables a believer to work gladly behind the scenes in order that God's work is fulfilled. It is the special ability God gives to some to serve the church as supporting role or to invest their talents in the life and ministry of other members of the body, enabling them to increase their effectiveness. It is a divine enablement to accomplish practical and necessary tasks that free up, support, and meet the needs of others. People with these gifts serve the scenes whenever they're needed to support the gifts and ministries of others without having to be asked. See the tangible and practical things to be done and enjoy doing them. Sense God's purpose and pleasure in meeting everyday responsibilities. Attach spiritual value to practical service. Enjoy knowing that they are putting up others to do what God has called them to do. Would rather do a job than find someone else to do it. Bill, you probably have, have this gift, I think. <laughs> uh, and many, many others. Sherry, yeah, our two, our two wardens both, both <laughs> have this gift. We're very blessed with our wardens. They both have this gift in abundance. So, um, but many, uh, many others have this gift in our church. What do you say? I said, and Kevin. Yeah, and Kevin, yes, <laughs> and Christine. And, and we could go on and on and on here. Michael, there's an associate pastor of a Presbyterian church, and I, I remember somebody said it yesterday. 
He said every Christian has a servant's heart. Every Christian, yes. Every Christian, yeah. every Christian has a servant's heart. You have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't, you need to be cultivating one. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend. <laughs> Pretend till you make it, right? Um, other comments about helps and serve. This is, a, a, again, a special dose of this gift. Um, and I see that in the altar bill. Oh, my yes. goodness. Everything is just great. Priests are about to do, you know, the, the, the leading worship and service, and everything is just where you need it, and they're very faithful and cheerful and uh, happy to serve that way. So I would imagine most of them have that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. That is a, a serving a job, a regular serving job that doesn't often get a lot of accolades, you know, the behind the scenes, getting things ready. Um, people who serve as ushers, yeah, I, I know some churches where people have served as ushers for 50 to 60 years, you know, that's their gift, is to serve and welcome people into the church. Um, yeah, there's so many of these different gifts, or, or, or expressions of this gift, I should say. But I'm, I'm looking around here, I think about all of you have this gift in some measure <laughs> as I look around this room. So this is really cool. Um, that's all I got this morning. Do you have any questions to come about these gifts or any of the other ones? We're going to look at, um, start with healing next week. Um, so we'll start there. Not healing, we did healing. Yeah. We're going, I, I got this, it's a hospitality next week. So we'll start there. Well, may God bless you. As you serve the Lord and as you think about the mystery of the Trinity today, we'll be looking at that in the sermon today. So I pray God will help us to understand the mystery of the Trinity today. And not just try to understand it, but to live into what, what it means for us as, as Christians. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we want to thank you again for the time to think about the gifts that you're giving the church and each one of us. We pray that you would help us to utilize them for your glory and your honor that you might, uh, again, increase, increase your church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.